So if you're a welder or you're looking to get into the welding industry, you may have seen how-to videos on your For You page or training videos and tips and tricks about welding. So today the team has sent me several of these videos out there and we're gonna be reviewing them. I'm a current welder in the industry and I'm gonna be giving you guys my opinions and advice on some of these videos. So hopefully you guys like this video and comment below what you want to see more of and let's get into it. Fellas, y'all did a great job this month. Y'all made almost 50 welds and all of y'all's welds are shot uh, x-ray. Y'all doing a fine job, but everybody knows when it comes down to the, towards the end of the job, you know, we need everybody to, we're a team. We're gonna help each other. We're gonna get through this. So we're almost to the finishing job. So I need all the welders to uh, go ahead and start picking up trash and everything. <laughs> God, that is a funny. God. <laughs> I ain't picking up no dang up trash. I'll pick up my box and take it out of here. Oh, there ain't nobody dragging up. Nobody's leaving. Everybody's going to be picking up trash, okay? Take this job and shove it. I ain't worth it. You know, on any job site, you're gonna get towards the end of the job, and that's when everybody gets a little antsy. The foremans, the welders, the fitters, you know, pretty much everybody's just ready to leave that job. And, you know, welding is one of the last things to get started on a job site, and one of the first things to be finished on a job site. So, a lot of welders, when it gets close to the end, and they know that all the welders are done, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of welders are going to drag up and not finish and, and stay and help out to get that layoff. And yeah, I've, I never was one of those welders that once the welds were finished, I, dr I drug up. There's a lot of welders that will do that and those welders are always going to be known as the welders that show up and just leave. Um, and I didn't want that for myself because I always wanted to stay busy, stay working and have connections. And so when all the welds were finished, um, I didn't drag up. I was usually a welder that stayed for startup. So after they started the plant or facility up and you know, you get paid good money on startup too because once all the trash is picked up and once everything's done, you're just sitting there hanging out, making really good money as a welder. So I never liked to drag up on jobs. Um, if I ever did, it was for a good reason. Like I'd already been scheduled onto another job and I had to leave. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't drag up just because you don't want to make welds. It's going to make yourself look bad and people don't want to call you back. Um, and if they do call you back, they're going to call you for the turnaround to make the crappy welds. So try not to drag up just because you don't want to pick up trash or be a team player and help out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the next one. This is one of the most highly debated topics in MIG welding. And I want to hear from you MIG welders on this one. So pulling your weld is when you start with a gun faced toward the beginning of the weld and you pull that weld straight through with that gun angle remaining toward the beginning of the weld the entire time. Pushing the weld is when you start the weld with your gun facing the end of the weld and you push that puddle across that weld joint with your gun remaining facing toward the end of the weld the entire time. So pushing and pulling have different characteristics too. Um, but basically with my understanding is with the MIG, it's not going to burn in as hot um, and you don't want it to just set the weld on the surface. Um, it's considered a cold wire. That's what a lot of people call MIG. And um, if you pull your MIG, it doesn't allow it to penetrate into the base metal to get a firm grip on that base metal for the weld that you're putting down. So I've always pushed my MIG and that allows it to just really dig in there and break down that base metal to connect you know, with that weld that you're putting in. And then also with like flux core, I always just pulled it and it's, you know, seemed to do fine. Never had any issues with it. Um, I've pulled and pushed both of these and there's a lot of different applications for pushing and pulling with the MIG and pushing and pulling with the flux. But generally speaking for most projects, most job sites and anything that you'll be doing, I push MIG and then I pull flux and that just um, it keeps you from having any issues, generally speaking. So hopefully that helps you guys uh, push your MIG, pull your flux. Let's get into the next one.
Yeah, I like that video. Um, it's really the basics of welding. Um, this is what you'll run into in situations where you're on the farm and you're trying to weld something or you're out in the field and you know it's a wild spot or something's just crazy off or an emergency situation to where it has to get welded and you can't prep your metal. Obviously the metal isn't prepped the best uh, for a cap. Uh, I would say that the, the underside isn't prepped as well but he does for the root pass there, how he's stacking the dimes. He probably has the machine up really hot because the ripples there, they're kind of like an arrowhead pattern. And generally speaking, that means it's the temperature is really hot on the welding machine. So he's just tapping it. He probably has it at, he knows a 332 rod. He probably has it at like uh, 140 maybe. And he's just tapping it on there. And it's kind of, you know, he's putting the root in, but it's so hot that it feels like he's not actually stopping it. And it kind of looks like a whipping motion. So he's just tapping that root in there and then he caps it with, you know, and I'm not 100% sure what this rod is. It could be an AC rod, it could be a DC rod. Um, but generally speaking, that is the basics of welding two pieces of plate together. But again, one of the most important things that a lot of people don't do is prep their metal properly. Prep goes a long way. It makes the weld better. It makes the connectivity of your rod and the base metal better. And it doesn't allow any um, you know, bad materials to get in the weld, um, like oxygen uh, or any kind of, you know, metal or rust or something that wouldn't be, you know, positive for that weld. So yeah, basics of welding, this is great. Uh, the prep could be a little bit better. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, so in this video, he's Looks like he's welding some really thin kind of metal. Looks like maybe a stainless or um, maybe some kind of shiny chrome or you know, maybe some kind of you know, Monel or Hastelloy or some, it's, it's, it's an alloy. And what he's doing, he has a, a setting on the machine. It's a pulse setting. And so what it does is when you hit it on the machine, it's gonna send out bursts of power out of the welding machine. And so what that does is if you don't have a pulse on and you're welding something very thin, it would be very hard to strike up your TIG rig and weld, but the whole time your TIG rig is putting off heat to the metal, so it's probably gonna fall out. So he has the pulse setting on his TIG machine and it goes bap, bap, bap. So it puts the heat to the base metal and the wire and it melts it all in one and then it stops and that allows it to cool down. So that is how you weld really thin metals is with that pulse setting and also too, it's very easy and functional to weld with a pulse setting. Um, it's more of a shop kind of thing. And so if you have a rollout wheel or a positioner, or you know, you're building a lot of parts throughout the day with your TIG machine, that pulse setting is literally gonna do the work for you. All you have to do is have the base metal prepped and be in the position to make the full length of the weld. So yeah, great video here just showing, you know, how to weld thin metals. All right, let's go to the next one. Advanced welding technique. When welding in the field, you will come across tight areas and objects blocking your field of view. This is where we implement a technique where we look through the gap. Putting in a root while looking through a gap can be a very useful technique that will help you stand out amongst your peers. Do you see this light on Rocky's lens? This is the only light your lens is exposed to while performing this technique. Your receiver will not be exposed to the arc flash. That's why it is best to opt for the all dark lens. The last thing you need is a flickering lens while looking at the sun. Yeah, so this is a rocky welding uh, piece of, looks like some three inch pipe. And um, looking through the bevel is one of the most important skills to learn if you're getting into the pipe welding industry. It's, I would say above all else, it's probably the most important skill for TIG welding pipe because there are so, so many, I can't, I can't express this enough. There are so many welds and there's so many situations where looking through the bevel will save you so much time, energy, and when you're looking through that bevel to put the root in, you can see everything that's there. You can see the root go in, you can see if you burn the walls, you can see how much reinforcement you have, you can see fish eyes, you can see everything. Because when you're welding pipe, you got a stick that goes that way, a stick of pipe that goes this way, and there's no way to look at it 
through either ends. Now in welding school, you can look at your pipe and you can tell what's going on. Um, you can say, oh, I had a fisheye here, I got knife edge right there, and you can, you can look at everything and fix it right there. But the problem is, when you get out in the industry, you have to look through that tiny little bevel the whole time to make your weld, okay? And then, you know, on top of that, when you close up the last little bit, it better be good too because you can't see that because the rest of the weld is made. So, again, most important skill for TIG pipe welding is looking through the bevel. And another aspect of that is you're gonna have to get used to the first part of it, which is struggling to figure it out, okay? I wish I had spent time in welding school learning how to look through the bevel, but I didn't. Um, and now you have an opportunity, wherever you're at, if you're in high school, if you're looking to come to welding school, is just put, make that an emphasis when you're TIG welding pipe, is to look through that bevel, and you're gonna not have to climb outside of the pipe rack and get some weird spot to put the bottom part of the root in. You can just look through it and make your weld. So that's a great video, super important. Be able to look through the bevel when you're TIG welding pipe and it's gonna save you time. And once you figure it out, it's gonna speed up your whole process and companies and contractors are gonna love you for it. All right guys, hopefully you got some insight out of that. My favorite one was the dragging up video because I'm totally against dragging up in the welding industry. So don't drag up and you'll have more of those connections. But again, today's video was about just reacting to some of these videos out there. There's a lot of good ones, there's a lot of bad ones but we just wanted to bring that insight to you today. So if you've got any videos for us that you want us to check out, drop them below or DM us and we can do a video on it. Until next time, I'm Keegan and we'll see you.